and to live with that because hunger, uh, empty stomach and hunger are two different things. Hunger means your energy levels start dropping. But empty stomach is a good thing. In the yogic sciences, today modern science also is coming in line with this. But what we know by our experience, you will spend a billion dollars to come there. Because research is all about how many million dollars, that's how it is. Your body and your brain works at its best only when your stomach is empty. So we always make sure we eat in such a way, how much ever we eat, our stomach must be always empty within two to two and a half hours time maximum. So we go to bed hungry always. People think they cannot sleep. They can sleep on an average. For twenty-five years on an average, I slept only two and a half to three hours. These days I'm getting little lazy and speaking, sleeping anywhere between three and a half to four and a half hours in spite of the level of travel that I have. When I say level of travel, if I say my level of travel in the next few days, you will fall off your chair. Yes? Should I tell you? No, not necessarily <laughs> Because in the next ten days, I'm in five different countries doing I don't know how many events, all kinds of events. So, you are able to keep this up simply because you don't overeat. It's very, very important. Everybody eats two meals. I generally eat only one meal, 4.35 in the evening because I don't like to sit in front of the plate and worry about how much to eat. I like to eat well. So, 4.35 in the evening if I eat a meal, it's only next day. Is this enough? Which… Am I looking okay? Hello? <laughs> I'm not looking like your patient, isn't it? I'm not going to come to you <laughs> Because any correction and purification that needs to happen in the body, your stomach needs to be empty. It's very, very important. Otherwise, the purification on the cellular level will not happen. You pile up things and then you have all kinds of problems. The first thing is inertia in the body. Inertia means there are many levels of inertia if you don't notice all that. The amount of sleep that you have is inertia. All of you, you have come here to live or… Hello? To live, right? Not here, here, I'm saying to this life. You want to live or… The intention of life is to live, isn't it? But because you talked about American doctors, this is all being picked up here also. All American doctors say minimum seven to eight hours you must sleep. So that means one third of your life you must sleep. Another two, three hours, four hours goes in bath, toilet, eating, this, 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 you know. So literally fifty percent of your life is just maintenance. Suppose you have a vehicle, you have a motorcycle or a car, if it goes to service one day in a month, all right to keep it. If it goes to service fifteen days in a month, this is a nuisance, isn't it so? Most people have made their systems into a nuisance because their own body is a big impediment in their life. Anything they want to do, their body will not allow them to do. So in this there are many aspects. One important aspect is people are eating much more than what they should eat, simply because they have been told you must eat more, otherwise you will become weak, this, that. No, it is the way you keep your body. A fuel… today everybody is trying to work towards a fuel-efficient car, motorcycle, everything. This means what? If the machine runs smoothly, it will consume less fuel, isn't it? So if you sit here and you are very much at ease, now it will consume less fuel. If you <laughs> like this all the time, then it will consume more fuel, it will want you to eat. Compulsiveness will come about this. So, this new name, intermittent eating, <laughs> you should see in the United States people come to our programs, our programs will run ten hours, twelve hours. So, uh, but they will come with some biscuit and something else. They say, I have uh, sugar intolerance, I have to, I have to eat. 
I tell them, you just be here, you're not going to die. I'll ensure because I don't want anybody dead on my hands, all right <laughs> I'll make sure. You first day, no, 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 I have to eat. By third day, they gave up all that. Twelve hours without food they sat there, they're perfectly fine. See, health is not something you can do from outside. Health is something you have to do from within. From outside when something goes wrong, you can seek some help. But all the time something is wrong with you, this means what? You're a faulty machine? Yes, all the time something is wrong with you, why? That's not how this is designed. This is designed for health. Every cell in your body is designed to create health, isn't it? They're all working hard to create health, except you. So, minimum eight hours gap is what is recommended in yoga. Between one meal and the next meal, there must be an eight hour space. If you do this, you will see half your problems of health, whatever you have health problems, minimum fifty percent will go away in six weeks' time. If you do certain other things which may right now seem little extreme to you, if you have a little yogic practice, something meditative within you, then you will see ninety percent of your problem will go out. Ten percent if it still persists, we can treat it. Now, it's become like this, the healthcare systems, especially where there is heavy insurance policies. People are eating and drinking all kinds of rubbish, go to the doctor and say, fix me. <laughs> this is not how it works. <laughs> Sadhguru Bhai